Yes, in game two, it's the return of your favorite game. We have Vuln, Vuln.c in the make file. It's no longer a static library, but maybe this will help. I'm going to libc blue cat me and check out the other differences in the make file also. All right, so we'll come down here and so we have a new make file. It's going to be a 32 bit executable. It's not position independent. This section right here is going to say that libc is relocated and it's going to be read only. So once it's loaded in, uh, libc, it's going to fix the global offset table. Now it's going to be problematic if we were going to try to do a attack on say like a format string vulnerability and we we're going to try to change maybe the address of printf to be the address of system or something like that. It doesn't look like we have um, the ability to execute. Uh, let's see, so we don't have that flag before, which turned off the stack canary. So we will have a stack canary now, which will make it harder to do a buffer overflow. Um, okay, well, let's take a look now at the program and see what's going on. So we have a buffer that's up to 512 now. Get random is returning not a random number, but instead the address of the function rand. So when I call get random here, I'm not getting random numbers, I'm getting the address of the function ran mod 4096. So and again, we have the same thing we had before. Down here now, we don't have that limit of 360 bytes, and we do have a format string vulnerability, like I mentioned. Here's a printf where there's no percent s in quotation marks. So I'll be able to use a format string error that won't let me change the got, but it will allow me to leak things. Um, so that may well be handy. And then the rest of this looks pretty similar to before. So the first thing I've done is create this randoms program. It's basically the same thing as last time, I've taken the code, I've modified it slightly so that we can just get the right answer. So we're just going to print out that answer. So we got negative 3983. So that'll be handy. So I can always know the answer. Negative 3983. All right, so now I can do whatever I want here with my format string vulnerability. So first I have to find where that is on the stack. So I'll just do like a, 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 a. I'm gonna walk up the stack, second parameter, third parameter, fourth parameter, fifth parameter, sixth parameter, seventh parameter, eighth parameter, all right, so oh look, here we go. There's there are my A's. So my A's were at the seventh parameter. And I know my buffer is 512, which means it's 128 four byte things. So if I add 128 to seven at 135, I should see my stack canary. So I'll just walk up a little bit from there. So there's my stack canary. Looks like my return address is probably immediately after my stack canary. I wouldn't expect that. So maybe, maybe that's the 80488C. So that's my canary. Let's see, let's think about how to figure that out. So if I do 
Yeah, so the 80488C is probably my return address. Okay, so looks like I'm going to need to go up 12 bytes to get to my return address from the canary. Um, what I'll also be interested in finding is I need to find the address of something in libc. So I'll do this again. So starting at that going to walk up for a while until I see something that looks like the address of libc. Because that'll get stored when the program begins. That'll be like a parameter coming into main on the stack. So as we walk up there, this one right here, this looks like the base address of libc, this F7F2A000. I think this is going to be the address of the return from the libc start main. So that uh, DF21. So that'll begin, that's the parameter 147. So 135 should give me the canary and 147 should give me the address of something in libc. Now, uh, what they suggest is I use this libc blue cat to get this. Unfortunately, I didn't have good success with, success with it. I should be able to like put in the last three nibbles of an address and find something so I think that um, this F21 should be what goes here, F21. I'll just look for that. You'll see it's not finding that. Um, so I have an issue where I really want to figure out what libc is running on Jupyter. So what I'll do instead is I'm just going to steal it from Jupyter. And I can steal it from Jupyter because I have a solver from guess one. So I'll run my solver from guess one. And now oh, that's not running my solver from guess one. So I'll run my solver from guess one. All right, so there we go. And now over here, there are my libc's, so I can look. I'm running Ubuntu glibc 2.27-3. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to actually grab a copy of it. So I'll say netcat, I'm going to listen on port 63, uh, 921, and I'll just route in libc-2.27.so. I can then come over here to my other, I'm going to say netcat, Jupyter, 
challenges.picoctf.com port 63921 and I'll just put that in this file bob oops so I missed a tuber challenges pt oh, pcctf.org. All right, so now I've got that connection. Fortunately, I'm not going to really get a notion of how long I need to wait, uh, but I'm going to kind of hope that's long enough. And I've got 192.6828. All right, so I have in fact managed to grab the entire file from Jupyter. So uh, that's gonna be handy because now I can actually run Rob Gadget on it. Um, that's binary, binary, Bob, Rob, chain. It's going to go through and it's going to look for all of the ROP gadgets in this version of libc because there aren't enough ROP gadgets in in Vuln itself so it fails if you try to find a ROP chain with that. Uh, I'll do this thing and it's going to eventually print out a nice ROP chain for me. There at the bottom. Okay so here it is. bin sh it's going to call that bin sh perfect so now what we need is something to sort of put this all together so we're going to connect uh, the jupiter challenges pico ctf.org one three six one zero receive lines now you'll note here that i'm sending negative 31 uh, because there is a different libc, random is at a different address on Jupyter. Um, with the libc, I can actually look and see what the address of rand is in that libc file. Um, alternatively, you could, in fact, brute force this. There's only about 8,192 possibilities from the positive and negative from the mod 4,096. Then the canary we said was parameter 135 and the base address uh, from that um, libc start main return is at 147. So I grab those two things. I'm going to split them on that pipe character. The canary uh, is from character 10 on if you look at that response. Then the, this part here is going to have the base address. I have to subtract out there's the offset of libc start main, and there's how far we are into libc start main. Print those out. I then receive uh, the prompt again, put in negative 31. Now I'm going to come in here, and as I mentioned before, there are 512 bytes of buffer followed by the canary, and there were 12 more bytes before you got to that return address we ever write. Here is the ROP code that came from a ROP gadget. You'll note I've changed those packs to P32s. I've added in this base address, right, because the ROP gadget didn't have that base address, so I'm adding all of those in. And then I come down here and I send it. So it connects. And there we have pop, ROP, and drop it. That should be our flag. And we've got them all for the mini competition. And this little post note I'll throw in here how you get that negative 31. I'm going to do this obj dump looking for random. So random is right here, 30FE0. Uh, if you're looking at mod 4096, that's just the last three nibbles, so that FE0. So this, that begins with a leading one in two's complement. It's a negative number. 
So if we subtract that from 4,096, we get 32. So we know that number is negative 32. Uh, we also know that uh, the C program is adding one to it. So negative 32 plus one is negative 31. And that's how we got negative 31 as our input.